Let's take a look at fixed versus flexible exchange rates. Now, you can certainly go into a lot more detail than I'm going to go into in this little tutorial, but I just want to provide a brief overview for people who don't really know the difference between the two. Now, a flexible or floating exchange rate essentially means that the price of one currency in terms of another, which is all the exchange rate is, is allowed to adjust based on supply and demand conditions. So the adjustment is quite easy. If there's a big demand for dollars, then the price of the dollar rises in terms of the foreign currency. If there's little demand for dollars, then the value of the dollar falls. One of the big advantages of this is that it gives the, co the country national policy autonomy. That is, they can engage in monetary and fiscal policy to stimulate their, their um, economy if need be. Now, compare that to a fixed exchange rate system. This is a case where the currency is pegged to some other currency, or perhaps gold, which is referred to as the gold standard, which you may have heard um, people talk about from time to time. One of the advantages of fixed exchange rates is it eliminates exchange rate uncertainty, right? You know that, you know, the price of one currency in terms of another is the same, is going to be the same and stay the same. And thus it promotes international trade. It also promotes price stability because it constrains the government from, for example, printing money, which can oftentimes cause inflation. But what it does is it requires the central bank to hold sufficient foreign reserves to supply the market at the given rate. So for example, if one unit of the local currency equals two US dollars, the central bank has to have enough dollars to maintain this rate. That is, if people want to exchange their units of the foreign currency, they have to have uh, two US dollars to exchange it for. So. One of the problems, though, is that in a financial crisis, a currency may become overvalued. In this case, the government may not be able to meet the demands to convert the local currency into the foreign currency at the peg rate. They just don't have enough, enough dollars um, in reserves, for example. Um, it's also the case that the government may be constrained in its use of monetary and fiscal policies to stimulate the economy. So if the economy is in a recession, they may not be able to print money or um, you know, cut taxes, et cetera, to get the economy going. All right, let's take a quick look at what happens when exchange rates change. So if you have a floating rate system, one of the problems is, is that prices change. So if you're an importer or an exporter, how much you're paying or how much you're receiving will change if the exchange rate changes. So for example, suppose a U.S. importer of British sweaters, uh, of British goods is paying um, a million pounds for these British sweaters. If the dollar appreciates from a dollar seventy-five per pound to a dollar sixty per pound, that is, it takes less U.S. dollars to buy one pound sterling, so the dollar is more valuable now. Then the cost is going to go down from one point seven five million, that is, a dollar seventy-five per pound times one million pounds, to one point six million. So um, costs go down. That's a good thing. If the dollar depreciates so that it takes more U.S. dollars to buy a pound, then the cost is going to rise to 1.85 million. So an appreciating dollar, that is the dollar becoming more valuable or taking less dollars to buy one unit of the foreign currency, is good for the U.S. importer, while the depreciating dollar hurts the U.S. importer. What about the other side of the equation? Now let's consider a British firm that is exporting sweaters to the U.S. and being paid $1 million. If the pound depreciates from $1.75 per pound to $1.60 per pound, remember this was the case, the same example I just did, that was an appreciating dollar, this, this would be a depreciating pound, that is one pound gets you less U.S. dollars then the cost of, um, of pounds the firm will receive rises from 
625,000 pounds. And you can see you take the million divided by a dollar seventy-five, right? That is, um, it costs you five seventy-one. Over here, it costs you six twenty-five. So if the pound, on the other hand, if the pound appreciates to a dollar eighty-five per pound, that is one pound buys you more U.S. dollars, then the cost falls to five hundred and forty thousand five hundred forty point five. So an appreciating pound hurts British exporters if they're paid in dollars. A depreciating pound helps British exporters um, if they're paid in U.S. dollars. All right, and here's one of the here's what they refer to as the trilemma: fixed exchange rates, free international capital flows and an independent monetary policy. These are three things that countries oftentimes consider important. You usually can only get two out of the three. So um, if you have fixed exchange rates and free international capital flows, then you're prob you can't have an independent monetary policy. If you have an independent monetary policy and free international uh, flows of capital, you can't have fixed exchange rates. So this is one of the um, problems with this. And so, for example, um, China and India were not really affected too much by the Asian currency crisis because they maintained capital controls. They didn't let money flow out of the country. You know, they controlled what money flowed in and what money flowed out. Um, Hong Kong, on the other hand, has free inter international flows of capital, but even though it has fixed exchange rates through what's referred to as a currency board, this is an extreme form of fixed exchange rate under which the local currency is fully backed by the U.S. dollar, but what they've done is they've given up their independent monetary policy, so they can't expand um, in print money essentially to stimulate the economy or contract it to contract the economy. So this is one of the issues with fixed versus flexible exchange rates. There are advantages and disadvantages on both sides.